Turn the fetch. So it's been over a week since I took all the sand out of the stove or out of the oven, but it's still not feeling dry enough to start a fire in there. So I'm probably going to have to wait a full another week, I think, before I even light a small fire, never mind actually cook something in there. So I put a candle in there and we'll see if it uh, helps dry it out a little bit quicker. But again, slowly enough that it doesn't crack. The, the problem is because it's all clay, sand and straw that does shrink as it dries and the faster it dries the more it shrinks and cracks so if I do it slowly I'll just let it dry slowly then it's going to uh, hopefully have less cracks in it now it already had some just from sagging as soon as I took the sand out so what I had to do is mix up a, a slightly thinner cob mixture and smear that in there and fill the cracks back up so I'm anticipating probably having to do that well again and then as the stove or the oven gets uh, used periodically over time might crack a little bit more and I'll just continue to purge it from the inside. Somebody pointed out that how am I going to patch the back of it now that I've closed in the gable end and that's a good question I didn't actually even think about that. I'm assuming that all the cracking that's important to take care of is going to be on the inside of the stove. I keep calling it a stove in the inside of the oven and then I can reach inside and purge it like I did which was awkward but doable. So we'll tune in another week or two and see the uh, the oven in action, hopefully.
Good, right here. Right here, right here. Good. Good. One. Right here. Nope. No, you're supposed to hold it. Come here. Here, 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 here. Here, feel. Feel, Kelly. Ready? Back. Good girl. Bring it around. Just to bring it right to you. So we finally got some cooler temperatures as you can see and it's really damp. We had something like 30 millimeters of rain yesterday, so over an inch of rain at least. And the uh, water's starting to recharge. The pond is filling back up. There's even puddles over here that I haven't had since spring. So nice to get some more rain, see what the bugs are like when it warms up again. But it's nice and cool for uh, working. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this this uh, sink soldered up so I need to get the charcoal barbecue going here to heat up the soldering iron and then uh, if I can get that sink in place kind of settled in and I can start finishing off all the surface it, like the counter I want to uh, sand that smooth put a bunch of coats of mar probably marine varnish or something like that so I can get a good uh, coating because some of the rain is coming in barely on this side I guess rain was coming in this way but I want to get all these surfaces protected but just to finish up this space these countertops make them a little bit nicer looking and uh, build a cupboard or a couple of cupboards to store utensils and pots and pans and stuff like that full outdoor kitchen because I'm going to cook out here even in the winter uh, for the most part or a lot of times anyway when it's not unbearably cold when I have the wood stove going it's going to make sense a lot of times to just cook on that but if, uh, if I don't have that fired up for some reason, then I'd like to cook outside. What are you doing? You see something out there?
over here. We recognize this tree from that uh, video back in sometime in the winter, probably February or March, where I cut down that big tree that's overhanging the trail, that that maple. I forget how many axe strokes it took, only a, like a dozen or so, because that little strip of live wood was the only thing holding that tree up from the, uh, the upward uh, side of the tree. So it was leaning this way. There was one section in the back of the tree that was live all the way up and all this was rotten so all I had to do was cut three quarters of the way through this, this little strip of live wood and the tree toppled over and it's a good thing I did that because it was overhanging the trail like I said so eventually it was going to come down anyway on its own and probably at an inopportune moment so I'm going to try to shape this to the door of the earthen oven Try to get it to fit snugly and hope that it doesn't check too much or completely warp out of shape.
Well, that was really stupid. I think that's the first injury in two years. Well, I don't know how long it's been since I've had an outdoor injury, but first injury since I started working on the cabin here. And it's a pretty good one. Just whittling the edge of that... Um, earthen oven door and slip with the knife and almost took the end of my finger off so I'm a little queasy right now it goes to show you it doesn't matter how tough you think you are or how prepared you are when an injury happens in the outdoors especially when you're alone I'm not um, or my wife's not here today I'm alone just me and Callie and slip with that knife and man it went deep so I lost a lot of blood here, never got it stopped just with the compression and cleaning before I put the bandage on. So I had to put a non, I don't even know what the hell it's called, non-stick bandage, like gauze pad, and then wrapped it tight with tape. So, anyway, it's my left hand at least, it's going to make some things more difficult including uh, typing, trying to trying to uh, upload this video, finish editing this video, but I'll find a way. So I'm going to clean up the blood and I guess put some gloves on like I should have had. The thing is, injuries happen, accidents happen. Of course, when you least expect them, you have to be as prepared as you can for them, but when you're working alone you have to be extra careful extra vigilant and I wasn't I almost always wear gloves for that reason because if I had been probably would have caught the glove and either not penetrated or not penetrated as deeply at least so another lesson learned uh, I do have a couple of first aid kits here I might as well talk about that quickly I have this one that I bought years ago for my boat when we had a boat because it stored nicely on the boat never used it um, so it's still fully stocked I have added some bandages and stuff that I've taken out of it over the years for the kids but um, first time I've had to use it now I do have training I have my wilderness first aid training I actually took it last spring uh, like April 2017 including CPR so I do know what to do, but of course when you get injured yourself, it's harder to take care of it. And uh, when you get lightheaded and in a little bit of shock, like I was, then uh, it makes it more difficult. So the first thing I did was get some compression on that, stop the blood as much as possible, washed it, get it, got it wrapped up, sat down, had a, a good drink of water, and uh, went and sat inside the cabin, kind of lied down and uh, cooled off a little bit. Now I'm feeling much better and I have to get back to work. So, pay attention to what you're doing always and, and always be prepared, always have a first aid kit with you and, and a way to get a hold of people if um, you do get injured. When I'm out in the back country I have that spot beacon but uh, here at the cabin I have a cell phone at least and text messaging and all that stuff so if I had to get a hold of it somebody I could
It's a little scary. I don't know whether to trim the wood or force it in here and trim the oven because I'm afraid it's going to crack a little bit more. It's still not, still, like that should be rock hard and it's actually crumbly still. And it's still wet, I can see. See that spot down behind me, down in the valley? That's where I've been seeing all the wildlife for the last year and a half now, I guess. So the bear hangs out right on that little point. The raccoons, the, what else has been there? Deer, otter, and two different, three different bears. But Gally likes to go down there. At least once a day she runs down there and checks it out and then she comes barreling back as if something's chasing her. But you can tell by her face and how happy she is. She's just having fun. But uh, checked the trail camera yesterday or a couple of days ago. And to see that that red wolf or that, uh, I guess it's not really a red wolf, eastern wolf, it's now been relabeled as Algonquin wolf, came through there during the day, which I think it's happened twice now. It's usually at night, but it's twice now. I've caught it on camera going through during the day. There's the one wolf that has been showing up for like two months, two or three months that I've caught on camera. And then there's another wolf that couldn't get a really good identif identification on it, except that it has a big bushy tail where this one that's here all the time has a mangy tail. Um, it looks very much like a coyote and it's still possible that it is coyote. Um, Algonquin wolves are like red wolves that they're very very closely related to coyotes and there's a lot of crossbreeding. So most of the wolves in this area have have at least some coyote genetics in them uh, but what's different is that you can hear a deeper howl and I've heard them howl a few times here and it, it's uh, very distinct very different from a coyote's howl or coyote's yipping and howls. So I'm 90 percent sure that um, that it's a uh, I don't know, Algonquin wolf or Algonquin wolf pack that hangs out here. I know there's a wolf pack that hangs out in this area so I'm assuming that's part of the pack. I wonder if that's a female and she's got a den nearby. Should hear the young ones yipping soon. Um, I haven't heard them at night, I'm surprised, but maybe it's too far away. Anyway, I'm curious whether Callie has actually met them or not, or met that one wolf. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on them. I'm going to set a target down there. Actually, I'm gonna start sighting in my guns in the next week or two and uh, do a lot more target practice, practicing and archery as well. I'll put a bale of hay or straw or something down here and another one over there and uh, practice. Anyway, I thought you'd be interested in seeing uh, more of the trail camera photos of the wolf and the bears. That's the spot I'm talking about right there. 
I actually cleared out a couple small trees so they could see straight down in, in there. And right behind, right over that peak, or right over the little hump there, which is a ridge that runs all the way along and then joins the beaver dam to the right, that um, is the beginning of the meadow. So the stream runs through there and then great big meadows, which is full, full of wildlife. Thanks for watching that video, really appreciate it. If you actually like my videos then, if you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. Only about 10% uh, of the regular viewers seem to hit the thumbs up, and then that declines as new followers start uh, watching, or new viewers start watching the videos. So, um, just hoping that you could do that for me, if you could hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, ironically or amazingly, only about 30% uh, of the viewers on my typical video are subscribers, which really surprises me. I can't understand how that that statistic is accurate, but these are the things I do pay attention to. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could. Of course, it costs nothing, and uh, if you really want to see the videos and be, make sure you're notified, then also hit that, that bell icon beside the subscribe button. Anyway, no, it's not a big deal, but if you could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to tune in next week to watch the next episode of The Forest Kitchen. I will be doing what? Well, I think I'll Oh, the floor. I want to put a, a wood floor down inside the, the kitchen area and uh, make some cabinets and stuff for the lower section, add a little bit more countertop, and then fire up that oven, which is the part I'm really excited about. can't believe it's going to be September soon before I really get to start using it. But anyway, that's just in time for fall harvest season, hunting, fishing, and, and uh, uh, vegetables and plants and all that kind of stuff. So I will be doing a lot of cooking in there. So anyway, hope you tune in for that series as well. Thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you at the cabin next week. Take care.